Hello there, and welcome back. Today I have a Scotty on the books, so I thought we would talk about the Clippered Pet Scotty. Typically, the Scottish Terrier is hand-stripped, but to make it easier for pet owners, budget-wise and time-wise, we do clip them. The pattern is still the same, just a little bit quicker. So let's get started. Like all of our grooms, we want to make sure that all of our prep work is done. Bath, blow dry, sanitary, nails, and pads. The Scottish Terrier doesn't get a tight sanitary trim in its show trim, and typically you don't need to do it on the pets unless the owner requests it because they have gross potty areas or they think that they're hot and a nice short belly will keep them cool. Once we're done with the prep work, we're going to work on the body. I'm going to use a one guard comb today, which is also a half an inch or 13 millimeters. I typically never go shorter than a four guard comb, which is equivalent to a five blade. Our blend line is going to start at the elbow here, and it's going to work its way up towards the tail set. Our blend line should be smooth with no apparent stops or lines. I'm going to take my clippers right up here to the ear, which is the start of the flat work, and I'm going to bring it straight down to that elbow. Flat work should always be really tight, and if you can't seem to get it tight enough, you can always go one guard comb shorter than the body. We want to try and avoid digging the clipper into the elbow. We want a nice skim straight down. We want to look for the lightest point and skim straight off of that, rather muscle or fat. You don't want to dig into the leg because it'll make the dog look chunkier. So feeling where my dips are, I'm going to take my clippers and then make sure to skim straight down as soon as it starts to dip. Skimming with your clippers is a practice art, and if you're not comfortable skimming yet, you can just get to your baseline and then clean it up with your thinners. I'm going to do the same skimming with the lay of shoulder here, where once I hit the shoulder, I'm going to skim down. You can use the bone of the shoulder for reference to know that once you hit that, that's where you scoop it out and skim straight down. You don't want to hit the leg because then you've gone too far. Make sure to go over your trim multiple times to make sure you've cut all of the hairs. The rear blend line is a little bit higher than the elbow. For reference points, you can use the rear hip bump and connect it to the front of the leg. I'm still going to use the same skimming technique off this leg as I did the front. We're going to wrap that blend line right around to the rear and careful not to dip into the rear angulation. Contrary to popular belief, the Scotty leg is not built up of one long layer of hair. Rather, it's built up with multiple short layers. The reason being that in show, we don't want this flapping around while moving. In the show ring, that's a sign of future medical conditions. In the pet world, that's just extra hair that they have to take care of and brush out. So by combing all of this hair outward, not up, but outward, and then skimming straight down, you should have a nice blended, short layered built leg. Now attaching the leg to the body blend line, I'm going to take my hand underneath the coat and pull the other side a little bit. So that way this line moves up and I'm not digging into the dog. I can again skim right off the body like this. By blending this way, this will just save me a lot of scissor work in the future. I'm going to continue connecting back and front by doing body blend lines from elbow to point of rear, and I want to make sure that my clippers are skimming off the body at around that line point. On a chunkier dog, I may take this line a little bit lower just to help out throughout the grow phase. If the line is too high, when it grows out, the hairs will stick straight out sideways, creating a skirt line. Ultimately, this will just make the dog look chunkier. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Again, when doing the rear, make sure you're scooping off of that shelf and not digging into this rear angulation. Make sure that the tail is up and you can feel the slope right down the bones here. She has a really nice one. And have your clippers fall straight off that shelf. Typically, the two little colics that sit back there, you won't go past those.
Again, I'm going to tug the opposite side of the furnishings to raise my blending line to help me scoop and clean all of this up. Remember, when giving that other side a tug, you are raising your blending line, so be sure to keep that in mind. With our clipper work done, I'm going to set down the clippers and I'm going to start preparing all of my scissor work. I always start with the rounding of the foot. With my curved shears here, I'm going to make sure that I cut anything out that sticks out past the pad. Most of this has been picked up with my prep work when I was cleaning out the pads, but I always want to double check to make sure it gives me a very pretty bevel. It's important that you do your nails before you do your bevel. Shorter nails will offer a tighter bevel, and if you trim the nails after your bevel, then you're going to have a lot of extra hair. With my curves here, I'm just going to follow the rounding of her foot. When you have a lot more hair to trim, I usually start with the very front of the toes and then make my cuts all the way around. Now I'm going to clean up the bevel with some curved thinners. This will help clean up any harsh lines I've made with scissors and give it a more natural blended look. I always double check my work with a comb. I'm going to brush everything up so I can see, and then I'm going to give the foot a little bit of movement or shake so it falls back into its natural position. If I were to cut these hairs while standing straight up, when they would fall, it would actually look choppy on this type of coat. I'm just slowly working my way all the way around the leg. We want to make sure that we not only trim the outside, but bring it all the way around to the inside. Once the inside hairs have been all trimmed, I'm just going to slightly pick this foot up and I'm going to scissor towards that tuck up. Be careful not to pick the foot up too high because then you'll trim off too much hair in the knee area. While Daisy was moving, I noticed a few hairs that stuck out and I want to make sure this hock hair here curves right into her rear angulation. So I'm going to trim that up a little bit tighter. Now I'm going to go over the rear with my thinning shears. I want to make sure that this area is nice and tight. As the hair grows out, I want to make sure that there's still a smooth transition and that no poop is sticking to the hair back here. And then from this pin bone, we're going to meet all of this hair here, all of this hair, down to the hock. So I'm just going to clean all of that up. This is usually a tough area for groomers since the tail needs to be up and out of the way and usually when tails go up, bottoms go down. If you have a plopper on your hands, sometimes by putting a loop around their belly will help them stand up. We're going to work our way up to the tail base here and we want this area really short and clean. Most hairs are supposed to be short backed and by keeping the back end of this tail here nice and short, it'll make them look shorter in body. Also, trimming all of this hair in the future will help it from collecting poop, which is probably more important than a short-backed Scotty to the pet owner. While I'm trimming the hair on the back of the tail, I'm also going to be conscious about the hairs that stick out at the side of the base where the tail connects. When the dog wags its tail, the last thing I want is for side hairs to come poking out at you. I'm going to let Daisy sit down while I work on the front of her tail. The Scotty tail is in the shape of a carrot, so I'm going to brush all of these hairs to the side. The amount of hair left from the tail is ultimately going to be decided by the owner or by the thickness of its natural tail. This is the tip of Daisy's tail, so I don't want the tip of my carrot going past any further than her natural tip. Now I'm going to do the same side combing of her tail and I'm going to trim any excess hair off there. Remember, I'm going for a carrot shape, so I want the base of the tail wider than the tip of the tail. For speed purposes, you could always take a guard comb over the tail, but the reason why I don't tend to do that is because not all tails are built the same. 
Now that I've trimmed the left and right and made a soft tip to the tail, I'm going to just double check everything on the sides before I blend the top of the tail here into the bobby. The top of the tail is typically left a bit longer than the back of the tail, again to give that illusion to the eye that the Scotty back is really short. Then I'm going to continue my way up the rest of the back of the tail. Daisy can still sit at this point because there are no connecting points to her body, and the back of the tail is taken pretty short anyways. For a reference point, I typically don't have anything longer than a four blade on the back of the tail. With my links all set, now I'm just double checking to make sure that when I tug on the hair, move it around, that there isn't anything sticking out. Here we have our carrot tail with a nice short back and clean potty areas. I've worked my way to the other side of the dog now. The front feet are beveled the same as the back feet, while keeping in mind not accidentally cutting into the chest hair. I'm going to do the same light lift of the leg to blend the back into the body. And then I'm going to comb down all of these furnishings so they lay nice and flat. And then I'm going to trim the line at the bottom. The length of the skirt is really going to be determined by your legs. If the pieces don't match, then you'll have that separated look. I like to use my hand to slightly press onto the skirt so that way I can see the hairs underneath. This will help give a more natural look versus the really blunt, harsh, scissored look. We're going to keep scissoring the underlying towards the chest. I'm going to pick the dog's leg up in a forward, natural position, and I'm going to make sure that this chest line meets in with the underlying. Always double check your work by combing through and repositioning the dog in a natural stand-up position. This will help me double check to make sure that the front of the chest is meeting the same line behind the leg. If the dog isn't standing in its natural position, then we won't really know if those two lines meet up. So I'm going to comb down and double check to make sure that all of these lines meet up with each other. Now that we're done with the underline and the trimming of the feet, we're going to clean up these clipper lines. We want a really smooth transition from the short clipped areas of the face into the longer body hairs. You want to make sure that you're grabbing any of those clipper lines that you made from the corner of the ear all the way down to the chest with a nice smooth blend into your flat work. Once everything is smooth, then we're going to put the final touches to finish our groom. If you need some help with a Scotty head, then be sure to click the link up in the corner or down in the description below. If you could give Daisy a big thumbs up for being such a wonderful and patient model today, she would really appreciate it. All the tools I use today are linked in the description down below. And of course, if you have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments. Thanks for joining us today, and until next time.